It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat is back from CES. Mary Jo Foley never left New York. She's a typical Manhattanite. Uh, we're going to talk about Microsoft's AI strategy because Cortana was really kind of invisible at CES. What's the plan, Stan? Uh, Windows 10, we got the new version of uh, Redstone 4. And a little talk about Meltdown Inspector and uh, the mitigations that are available to you as a Windows user. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 553, recorded Wednesday, January 17th, 2018. Even Paul can't read it all. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life, right? That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash windows. And by IT Pro TV, the fun and entertaining way to sharpen your IT skills. Visit itpro.tv slash WW and use the code WW30 to get a free seven-day trial and 30% off a monthly membership for the lifetime of your active subscription. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Redmond, Washington. Home to the Cleveland Indians. No, home to, to Microsoft. The Clayton Redmondites. <laughs> Is there a minor league ball club in Redmond? <clears throat> there are all of them, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> That's Paul Thorat. Waggish. The waggish Paul Thorat. He's back home from CES and he seems uh, fairly healthy, which is a remarkable. Miracle. Yep. I have incredible, what is it? Not dexterity. <laughs> constitution. <laughs> He's got an incredible constitution. Much like this nation, Paul has an incredible constitution. And that's Mary Jo Foley, who didn't go to Vegas, but is a little scratchy not. in the throat, I think. I know. You yeah, should, go you figure. You should have gone to Vegas. Should have gone. Paul is at throt.com. Mary Jo is at all about Microsoft.com. And between the two of them, there is there are nobody better at covering the latest from Microsoft. The the AI company. I think that's the new tagline. Microsoft, the AI company. Right? <laughs> you can't spell Microsoft without AI. Oh, wait. Wait. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can. <laughs> can wait, you? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, so, um, so this, why do we want to talk about this? This is right? Mary Jo's story, I think. Yeah. A Be little. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know what? We, we talked a lot last week about Cortana and how a lot of people just think those personal dis digital assistants are what constitutes AI. But there's a lot more to AI than these these uh, smart or pseudo-smart kind of PDAs. Is right? this backfilling to make up for the fact that Microsoft Cortana got no attention at CES and Google and, <laughs> and, and Amazon got all the attention at CES? Is that what this no. is? No, no, actually, well, because I think Paul and I both agree that Cortana is kind of in trouble right now. At Microsoft, yep. Yep. but but, but exactly. I think people don't understand the whole picture. And this week there was a report that came out in Windows Central about um, something that Brad actually had written about before I was too. Say, which it, is, it was a report from last June, if you <laughs> consider Brad's article. Uh, but yes, right. right. So the the idea is, you know, everybody's been talking about Cortana's going to be decoupled from from being the front end of search. Oh, that's when, interesting. So, you know, when, when Cortana was born, I actually went back and looked at the first time I wrote about Cortana. It was 2013. Wow. And um, the idea hmm. back then was here is this front end assistant that works on top of Bing, right? So as Cortana evolved, it was pretty much, I used to always say, Cortana is the lipstick on the Bing pig, right? <laughs> Cortana was the pretty front end to Bing. Oh, man. I would get a phone call if I ever called it that. I called it that a few times. Maybe that's why they never talked to me on the on that team. Um, <laughs> but now what they're going to do, and we've all heard this, Brad's heard it and Windows Central's heard it, I've heard it too, is they're going to take Cortana away from search. So the idea is Microsoft wants you to think Cortana is something more than just a front end to Bing. And both Brad and Windows Central have heard 
the way they're going to do this is in some future Windows 10 release, they're going to take Cortana out of where it sits now in in the search box and put it somewhere else. Windows Central here is they're going to put it in the Action Center. So a lot of people are freaking out. They're like, wow, Cortana's already in trouble. Now they're going to make it even less visible. Well, I think you have to go back and look at what is the goal of Cortana and what is Microsoft's goal in AI. And the goal of Cortana is to be more kind of an under the covers thing, even though you, they, Microsoft wants you to continue to talk to it and think of it as your um, conversational smart agent. They also want all the things that, that actually make Cortana smart to be in other products at Microsoft. So you're gonna see Cortana integrated under the covers in a lot of places. And we've already seen that in Office. Microsoft's been adding Cortana to things like Skype they're adding it to LinkedIn. They're adding it to Outlook, right? So that when you get a package, Cortana's tracking it for you if you want Cortana to do that. Um, mm. What's going to happen in Windows is going to be interesting though, right? So if they take Cortana out of the search box and put it into the OS itself, that kind of begs the question, will Microsoft go so far as to say Windows is now an AI operating system? And you know what? I bet they're going to do it. You know, I you can't spell Windows without AI. Oh, wait. <laughs> um, Why do I, I think, think we talked to, I, I think we talked Why about this I a little bit last the, week. We did. The kind of semantics right. around uh, yeah. Cortana and, and, and a misunderstanding of what Cortana is. I mean, in, in Windows 10, they made the explicit choice to th put this very big and, and easy to see Cortana box, you know, yeah, but it right on the task. It confuses me because yeah, me too. the box yeah. says type here to search and to the left of it, is Cortana, yeah. and to the right of it is a microphone, and it says type here to search. Isn't that a little... I understand. This is confusing. I, I, well, I, the, I think this Very feeds confusing. into what she's saying, is that people kind of misunderstand what Cortana yeah. is, and people who are worried that Cortana is heading for some kind of a defeat, I think misunderstand what part of all this is important to Microsoft mm -hmm. and for their future. You know, um, you can today... if you, For example, if you hit the, the Windows key on your keyboard and you just start typing, this mm -hmm. is how Windows Search has worked since... What, Windows Vista? Windows 7? Yep. I don't remember exactly. Um, uh, you could also, you know, click into the Cortana box, like you said. But when you do, you actually get a Cortana user interface that comes up. The interesting thing that happens, though, is that if you actually just type, it's you see the same exact results that mm -hmm. you would see if that search box wasn't even there. Um, for that reason, I often just remove the search box because it's taking up space. And on a laptop in particular... It takes up way too much space, and I just don't have a need for it because I know I can always hit that button. But the ability to search, and, and, and typically what you're searching for is an application or maybe a document. You can also use it to search the web and I think the App Store now too. But I think most people are searching for it. I, I use it for secondary apps. You know, mm -hmm. The apps I use the most often are on my taskbar. Uh, the apps I don't need so much are obviously in the start menu somewhere. Rather than go find them manually with the mouse, I just type in the first couple of letters, O, N, E for one note or whatever. And there it is. Um, moving Cortana to the Action Center or whatever doesn't change anything. I mean, it just doesn't change anything, I think, for most right. people. And I don't think it impacts, you know, Cortana either. Um, right. I, you know, to I know. your point... It's I think Sorry. the people who are worried about this are people who think people talk to their PCs. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do routinely talk at my PC. Yeah, but not right. too quick. That's not the yeah. same. <laughs> no, it's not the same. It's it's in fact a disorder. But um, I fact, think earlier when your I, computer, before, before the show, I, I said the hey, you know who word. Yeah. And I because yeah. I have one of those uh, Harman Kardon inv invokes because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was I was going to talk to the invoke, but the computer responded, and I was kind of surprised. That's yep. how often I talk to it. At night, these things uh, fight each other for <laughs> dominance. You know, he's which, mine. which one gets to go first? No, hey, he's hey, mine. I'm closer to him. He's touching me. <laughs> yeah. No, I think talking to the computer is uh, overrated. I know people. Yeah. I dictate sometimes to mobile devices because I don't like the keyboards. Mm -hmm. But it's ju it's just when your yeah. hands on the right. keyboard, why are you going to start talking yeah. to it? Here, here's it I think the right sense. way to think. Huh. I, I think this ambient computing stuff is going to be a big deal in the home in the short term, right? And that totally today we agree. use these little speakers, but those little speakers and microphones could be in light switches. They could be in they'll be everywhere know, in they'll the refrigerator. Everywhere. They'll be everywhere. And the idea is that whatever system you're using, there'll be some hierarchy probably based on distance and some other mathematics, and one of them will respond and it will kind of come out to the appropriate speakers, however it works. 
Um, there's nothing wrong with adding it to the computer in the sense that it becomes another node in this system. But like you said, the truth is you don't typically sit in front of the computer to talk to it. No. You know, yeah. that's not no. a normal thing. And and it, it, and just as the world has evolved where computers are used to do less, I don't know, consumption type tasks over time, we use tablets and phones and things instead, or we go out to our TV or whatever. I, I think this use also is infrequent on a PC. Yeah. So it's just the reality of the type of device it is and how we interact with it. Mm -hmm. So the thing that's confusing, I think, to me and to I'm, I'm sure other people is is Bing Search and Cortana somehow seem conflated. They are. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, they absolutely See, are. Because when you say Cortana to me, I think it's a search, it's a voice, in, not search, it's a, you know, a voice interface to the computer. And when yeah. I think of Bing, my, I think of search. But yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> I can't say. <sorry>, <laughs> Help me. Help um, me. Microsoft needs to, to work on the branding part of it. But it's not just yeah. branding, right? It, it's also an understanding of what this thing is and where it is. Yes, you know, and what the important bits are. Because I think yeah. this is the way it is, kind of. They understand Cortana, it more deeply. Well, <laughs> maybe. But so, I mean, people who write me, the software understand the integration. I'm just saying to the user yeah. who's only oh, seen see the surface, yes. Yes. It's, it's like, well, I don't understand what Bing has to do with Cortana. The, the problem is they give names to things like, uh, and I don't know the names of all these things, but like Cortana whatever services that is a cloud-based right. thing that's probably an Azure. Yeah. And it's like, you know, they, I, I feel like they need to be better about what's what. Because as far as I'm concerned. are all about namespaces. Oh, but absolutely. We, as that, users, we don't know the names. We don't know your guess, namespaces, you know? So, by the way, yeah. that, that's a huge, that what you just touched on is something that's very core to what I do. If I, we go back to when Windows Phone first came out and I met with those guys the first time, I said, I'm writing a book. I need to know what things are called. Right. And they were like, oh, well, we don't really have names for this stuff. And like, no, you do have names for it. You're the, you have developers that are creating the system. They call it something. They have names, yeah. I, they, I need to know what those names are. And at the time, it wasn't available, so that was a mess. Um, the, I, I guess what I'm, I'm uh, suggesting here is that this stuff isn't as clean with the Cortana slash AI slash whatever stuff because – they are calling these things the wrong things too. And I, 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 <laughs> well, yeah. no, I mean, I, I, I feel yeah. like this, and I think that's Mary Jo knows what I'm talking about. It's just a mess of names and ends and yeah. front end. So, you know, when, so it's, it's really interesting to go back to the 2013 original reporting on this because when Microsoft first described Cortana, the way they talked about it was an intelligent agent, but they admitted what was underneath yeah was the tell me technology that they bought. That was the voice interface, right? Oh, so yeah. that you could talk to it. I remember that. And that goes back, by the way, that goes back to Windows Mobile days. I mean, that's, I know. There was yeah. a, there was an app you could get for Windows Mobile that would, yep. you, would allow you to talk to the phone. Yep. Yep. And the other thing that was under it was this thing codenamed Satori. Satori was the knowledge based repository that's inside Bing. So that's how the Bing thing got connected with the Cortana thing. But, they also said, you know what, we're using machine learning technology. That piece just got lost, right? Everybody sure. just thinks, oh, Cortana, it's like you're talking to Bing. Well, there's other smarts that are happening inside of Cortana, and that's what Microsoft wants to highlight going forward, right? They want you to think of this as being AI and not just a pretty front end to Bing. So, Which, by the way, makes sense because what you don't want is a Wikipedia result spoken to you. Exactly. You, know, you want something yep. smarter than that, and that's what the AI piece yep. is. Yep. And so I, you know, like some people were kind of throwing this idea around. I, I can't remember who did this first, but they said, you know, it would be interesting if they start calling Windows Redstone 5 or 6 an AI operating system. I could totally see them doing this because once you get the idea of Cortana being just a search thing away and you say, say now our entire Windows operating system is infused with intelligence – you could you could call it that. You could use but those it, words. <laughs> the problem is, I mean, uh, I know. It, just yeah. having Cortana in Windows doesn't make it smart. In fact, I think no. some of the applications of Cortana in Windows are dumb. Right. And but I wonder what. Yeah, like how do we qualify to, that? Right. If 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 it's actually making use of machine learning on the back end, if it's getting smarter progressively based on your results and is starting to quote learn from you mm -hmm. and starting to actually do things more intelligently, you could make that claim. And the reason I think Microsoft wants to make that claim yeah. is Windows is the only part of the business right now where they, do, they don't really have an AI pitch. Like in Office 365, you hear them talk about AI all the time. Right. 
You hear them talk about it with Azure. You hear them talk about it with their research group, right? But the part of Microsoft that doesn't really talk about AI besides um, just talking about Cortana is Windows. And if you if you look at Microsoft's stock price today, it's nine, over $90. Why is it? Because the Wall Street analysts love Microsoft's story about AI and the cloud, and they don't care about Windows, right? Do you, do you think <laughs> that um, attaching Windows to that train might diminish the AI message? That in other words, they might not want Microsoft to promote that. Maybe, maybe not though. Because, you know, if you if you go back to last August when Microsoft's annual report came out, remember a lot of people wrote this story. They're like, you know, Microsoft used to talk about themselves as a mobile first, cloud first company. And, in, and then last August in their annual report, they suddenly right. started talking about themselves as an intelligent cloud, intelligent edge infused with AI company. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I, right I, off the tongue. <laughs> aside yeah. from the AI bit, I mean, in, in many ways, intelligent edge is just saying the same thing. Like it's, it is. it's cloud yeah. and devices. It's just a different yeah. way of saying it. But that does speak, you know, there's something you see very that's very interesting in the mobile world. Uh, Apple started it. And I think in part because they just don't have the big cloud-based infrastructure, say Google does. But the, you, they start talking about machine learning on the device, you know. Um, Google talks about it, um, and I think what you're suggesting is that Microsoft should talk about it. In other words, you have all of this local processing power. Why wouldn't you use that? I mean, obviously, you have to hit cloud services when you're online to get more information, whatever it might be. But if you're in an offline situation or in a slow network or whatever, it, it shouldn't even matter. Your, your computer is so powerful and so underused. Um, promoting that on the PC, I do think, would make sense. Yep. And remember, they said the next version of HoloLens is going to have that processing power for AI at the chip level in the HoloLens, right? So they're t they are talking about it too, right? They should call um, it a neural processor. Did anyone maybe steal they that? they will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, I think I think the whole AI story from them, we, we talked about it a little bit when we were doing the preview of trends for this year, but... Uh, Trust me, everything you hear out of Microsoft in 2018 is going to have an AI angle. Already this year, I, we've heard we've heard so many stories from them about this. You know, we now have the best machine reading comprehension. It's thanks to our AI technology, right? Everything right. is going to get the AI spin. Like last year, I feel like the spin was digital transformation. This year, it's going to be AI everything. AI all the things. That's that's going to be what they do. Yeah, no, I, I mean, you know, Surface Pro and I. I think Service Book 2 might have this too. I don't, I don't remember them promoting it, but, you know, they have that special digitizer in the screen that makes it better mm -hmm. for handwriting, right? So yep. any Surface device works fine with a Surface Pen, the new version, but if you have this a newer device and the pen, it, it works better. And that's not necessarily AI, but you could yep. picture them having custom chips or chipsets for those purposes as well. And that would be an interesting way to differentiate a Microsoft device like from, you know, an HP device or a Dell or whatever. Yep. Um, yeah, I could see it. Yeah, me too. The other the other technology that we don't really talk about that much when when we do this show, but I think is going to be huge for them um, when we talk about AI is all the stuff they're doing around cognitive services. And so if you, if you know what that is at Microsoft, cognitive services are all these APIs that they've been building out that they want developers to use to add to their applications, right? So there's a Bing web search API, there's a text analytics API, a face API, um, computer vision API. All of these things sit in Azure. They run on Azure on the back end. And all of these things are gonna be connected to what you hear from them across all the product lines. So there's gonna be some things with Cortana that derive from some of this stuff or at least work with it. Um, I bet we're gonna hear more from LinkedIn about using this. I think we're gonna hear more about Office using these um, different APIs. So that's another theme to watch for this year when you when you think about what's Microsoft doing with AI. That's, the, it's not it sexy, like, but it's big. Well, but, it, but it, right, it's IBM sexy. I mean, yeah. it, it's, I think the big win here is when some third party and major third party yep. can be touted as a win. You know, for that thing. In other words, yeah. uh, Cortana, cognitive services, or whatever they're calling it. You know, um, if Facebook were to start using it for some reason, or um, we talked a few weeks ago, I think about this notion that the future of gaming is is streaming from data centers. Microsoft is uniquely yeah. poised to do that. Wouldn't it be interesting if Nintendo or Sony or some other uh, competitor today became a partner, 
because they needed to use those services to get their own thing up and running. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's a capability that Microsoft has that those guys just kind of don't today. Yeah. If you go to their cognitive services page on the web, they do tout Uber as one of the big users. But the other ones are kind of like, oh, okay, you know, Blue Cup, Gray Meta, whoever <laughs> these guys are, right? But Uber has the cute yeah. little cars. That's a, that's a great yeah. example. Yeah. I think everyone enjoys that. Look at the little car. I know. Right. So, they, yeah, I agree with you. They need more big name um, yeah. converts to using the cognitive services. But but that's kind of stuff, you know, it's it's stuff we don't talk about a lot on Windows Weekly. But this is the stuff that is kind of making the Microsoft wheel go round at this point. And this is where I, they're putting all their – like they have 5,000 people. Need partners. <laughs> I, I wrote an they editorial do. this morning about yeah. Netflix and how terrible it is. And the reason Netflix yeah. is terrible is that it's not smart. And so if you think about something like I watch a show, we watch it through to completion. We loved it. It doesn't matter if we loved it. We watched every episode. As far as Netflix is concerned, we liked it. It should then pop up a bunch of things that are related to that show, which it does, but it doesn't leave out the ones we've already watched. It, In fact, you know, in, in most <laughs> cases now, the first five choices are shows we've already seen. That's dumb. Mm, that's 1990s dumb. That's yeah. that's a, a, a simple C, a SQL database query would fix that problem. Mm-hmm. You know, Microsoft with their AI machine learning, you know, magic or whatever, could do wonders for a company like Netflix, mm-hmm. you know? And, and yeah. I, the applications of this thing are, are, are almost infinite. And uh, mm-hmm. I assume, <laughs> I have to assume that Microsoft, given their history, is looking for this kind of partnership. Um, but there are yeah. many, many examples of where they could help out. And I think yeah. that is the, the, the non-sexy future you were referring to, you know, the IBM-esque future is yeah. Microsoft on the back end. Yeah. Not Microsoft, yeah. you know, using some Microsoft device or some Microsoft app right. or whatever. I, th- I think the real future here and the volume here is going to be the back end service stuff. Me too. And I think at Build, whenever Build is this year, April, May, we're probably yeah. in Seattle. Um, I bet this is going to be a huge track. I mean, remember two years ago, they talked a lot about bots and conversation as a service. And last year, they didn't really talk about that at all at Build. Um, right. Just maybe a passing reference, but I bet this year um, that whole push is going to be back again, and and probably more on the cognitive services side. And here's how developers can make their apps AI aware, smarter, working with the Microsoft yeah, I, I Cloud. Yeah, it's the same the thing. If, if, if yeah. you want to order a pizza or whatever, <laughs> and for some reason you want to speak that command to the either, <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> you're not going to boot up Skype and start interacting right. with Pizza Hut. You know. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean that Microsoft can't play a role in that transaction, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And I, I think this, you know, again, we deal, Mary Jo and I, with a lot of enthusiasts. And I think the the defeatist sense that you get is from these people who uh, only see the devices and the front end stuff. And this is what they care about. And I'm one of those guys. I mean, I completely understand it. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I, I look, I feel that pain. But I mean, yeah, the world went in the way it went. So you right. have to kind of work within the confines of that and give Microsoft some, some credit for doing it. And I think they have a really rich future in, and it's weird, it's just such a, it sounds so secondary, but it's so important uh, to play the supporting role yeah. in the front end services and devices that people will actually use. That's where the money is, as we always yeah. talk about the enterprise, right? It's like, yeah, you would love to see them in more speakers and washing machines and cars, but <laughs> where's the real guess, money? Yeah. It's in the yeah. cloud, right? And that's yeah. if they can get a toehold there with people using Azure on the back end, Azure Bot Service, um, any kind of mm-hmm. Azure machine learning services and tie other front ends to it. I don't think Microsoft cares anymore if that's the way it goes. As long as they get the money somewhere in the transaction, yeah. I think that's And by the way, care. since we're still early days and there are already a thousand <laughs> of these services, maybe it's time for a little rebranding effort. <laughs> you know, let's yeah. think about uh, renaming these things in ways that make sense. Uh, and yeah. making it a little more cohesive. It's hard, you know, just to keep track to of what's track what. To track it, but right? I know, yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but just it seems even, like the names are all over the map. <laughs> they are. And for a while, they, like we said last week, they were adding the word Cortana to everything, right? It was Cortana yeah. Machine Learning Suite, and it had nothing to do with Cortana, really, you know? Um, right. And I think they're stepping back from that cliff like they did when they added .NET to everything. They're kind of backing away from that. <laughs> windows to everything, um, yeah. Which is good. Um, you know, and, um, but they do, I agree. The they need more Microsoft. of a cohesive brand. Yeah, the brand is Microsoft. Brand's right? Microsoft. And yeah. they've learned that in some ways that we've kind of learned it on the client a little bit. Yeah. Surface devices now come with a Microsoft logo. Yeah. Microsoft uh, 365. Surface, whatever. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I, 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 this is the brand that's going to make sense. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Microsoft is a great brand, very well respected. Um, you know, the leadership of the company is very well respected, et cetera, et cetera. If you're a, yeah. a big company looking to do whatever it is and you want to partner with some techlo technology company in this space, uh, Microsoft becomes an obvious choice. Nobody knows what Cortana, cognitive, blah, 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 what is. But no. if you say it's Microsoft, <laughs> AI, something, you're like, oh, yeah, that's what we want. Obviously, that's what we want. Yep. Yep. What do we want? <laughs> when do we want it? When do we want it? Cog now. Cognitive toolkit. <laughs> 2013. But <clears throat> since we can't have that, we'll take this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and we're making great strides. And someday uh, when you've married Cortana, you'll, you'll know it's happening. It's here. You want to? You guys want to hear a quote from 2013? I, I'm just kind of yeah. obsessed going back and looking at this. Right. Um, this is from sure. Steve Ballmer, and he was talking about adding Cortana um, to the shell, to the Windows shell. And they didn't. Ha they hadn't actually divulged the name Cortana yet. Um, but he said our UI will be deep, deeply personalized, based on the advanced, almost magical intelligence in our cloud that learns more and more over time about people and the world. That's what they did, right? In the end. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it Deeply is. It, it's, the implementation is so um, ham-handed in a way, right? You know, Cortana. Yeah. I, I mean, it kind of has to be. I, you know, how do you... The, the notion of technology that learns about you sounds wonderful and it's like Blade Runner or something. Yeah. But the truth is, right. <laughs> does Cortana really learn anything about me? Not really. I mean, I, Only what you I give put it in information. The notebook. Right. right. But what that's me teaching it, not yeah. it learning. I mean, it's... Yeah. It's not like it's this thing sitting on my shoulder watching what I'm doing, um, which I think is how a lot of people <laughs> imagine it would be. Yeah. Although, I told you guys, when I, I entered one time just to test it, a reminder in my phone, and I'm like, next time I go to Fairway, tell me to buy milk. And I'm just like, yeah. yeah. Then one day I walk into Fairway, and I happen to look at my phone, and it says on it, buy milk. Nice. Um, so you're like, okay, that feels magical, yeah, but you know what? right? <laughs> that's, that's good. But what magical yeah. is, is when my wife and I have a conversation about a certain topic and then I turn on my computer and I get an ad for that thing. That's Google. <laughs> so, you <laughs> yeah, know, no uh, I, so I hear you. But I mean, uh, the that Blade Runner thing that I was talking about is happening. It's just not happening at Microsoft. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, there's some really yeah. creepy stuff that happens with Google and that's how you know it's right. effective. Like the creepier it is, you know, the more invasive it is. In some yeah. ways, you know, the more yeah. capable it is. You know, if we ever get thing. general AI, don't you think it'll be massively creepy? Yes. Oh, it has to be. <laughs> it has to be. It, but yeah. all, you know, yeah, I it'll mean, be like, hey, Paul, you haven't hugged your wife in a few uh, hours. Maybe you want to. <laughs> but you have to, all you have to do is dig deep into what is cre what creepy means and what it, and what biologically creepy is. It's it's yeah. this uh, very valuable biological symptom that something's not right. That right. something is trying to be human that's not, and and that's yeah. what general AI will be. Uh, yep. I guess if it's really good, it won't be creepy because, but there'll be an uncanny valley at some for it some will. time. There has I to imagine. be. I have, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. There always is. We've all had these. We moments might be in it. Yeah. I mean, this is yeah. we're kind of in it, except that yeah. it's so dumb. Actually, this yeah, there there's probably an analog to uh, how uh, computer generated graphics. So yeah. in the early days of computer-generated graphics, you didn't attempt to make it look real because you just couldn't. Even. And it wasn't right. creepy because, well, it's a cartoon. Yeah. Right. And then, but now uh, they actually make them weird just so you know it's fake because it gets too... You can make it real, re I yeah. mean, so real that you miss it. I mean, a lot of people missed yep. the CGI in uh, Star Wars. Yep. Uh, there, two, there were, I won't say anything, but there were, not this year's movie, but a couple yeah, of years the back, one. there were two characters, characters that were yeah. fake. Oh well. The, 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 I'm not talking. You're not talking Jar Jar Binks, Binks characters. Human, We're talking humanoid characters. <laughs> yeah. um, and if you knew what to look for, it was it was still slightly creepy. But if you didn't know what to look for, you would just go right by. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I think we're getting there. I think we're yeah. getting there. I mean, some of, some of the invasive creepiness though is there already. I think I think I remember telling you guys this too when I first got a Windows phone and you know it like if you repeatedly go back to a place, it assumes it's your home. You know. So one That's day right. I was at Rattle and Hum, of course, and uh, it said, home. "Welcome home." Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, so oh, that's Aww. creepy. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was Windows Phone, and it would, so this would have been Bing or Cortana, whatever. Um, one day uh, I I went to map myself home, and it mapped me to a bar in Walcott Square in High Park, which 
I've out not never actually been inside of. Um, I've been by it. I used to go to the Dunkin' Donuts next to it occasionally. Oh, I was confused. Um, it thought it was I had to look it up because I was like, "What is this thing?" And yeah. you know, I looked it up on the map, and I was like, "What?" You go you know, there a lot, Paul. Yeah, I maybe I just blacked out. I don't know. But, uh. <laughs> well, but and this is a funny discussion going on in chat because uh, what happens is it's it, it's just computer algorithms right up to the point where it's yeah. not. Uh, or it doesn't right. seem to be, but it is. And so uh, yeah. AI up to the point where it starts getting, you know, realistic just looks like a computer program and a, and a dumb one right now at that. It's uh, Siri right. and Cortana and Google and Amazon are just, you know, they're kind of dopey, yeah. pure, purely, uh, I mean, kind of bad simulations of humans, but they're getting better. Yeah. And there will be an inflection point where they'll, yeah. get, where it'll just be, I can't. Tell it's also going to happen pretty damn quick. That's the thing. Well, that's you know, the Microsoft. Question. Who knows? Yeah. Right. When they but, talk about early applications of AI, we'll point back to even this very simple things like uh, spell checking in Microsoft Word in 1993 or whatever. And um, you know, you kind of look back at that. and You're like, okay, I could kind of see that. Of course, the way it was implemented at the time was just a table of words. It was the simplest thing in the yeah, world. But yeah. Um, but of course, you watched Word um, improve over the years, where they got the little squiggles under things and started looking at grammar. Started making mm -hmm. uh, recommendations for you know simplifying your speech or whatever. Um, I think it'll be smart, perceptible when it happens. I think we will gradually yeah. ease into it, and twenty or thirty mm -hmm. or forty years from now, you think it's that much time? It, yeah. I th well, I mean, mm. I don't know. I don't know. I you, no I one know. knows. I don't know. No, no. It's one, hard no, to no, tell. Sure, yeah. <clears throat> Technologies happens simultaneously. Takes faster than you think and longer than you yeah. think. Right? You know. And I mean, actually, so. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say some of the things that seemed like they were impossible and so far away aren't even that far away. In December, Microsoft said pretty soon. I mean, they didn't give us a date, but but it's on their roadmap now. Cortana is going to be able to um, sort emails and give you summaries of the most important right. ones, not just from Outlook, but from Gmail and other accounts too. So oh. that that's Based one of those on technology seems. But Google does that in no, Gmail but that? now, no, but, but it's not Cortana. Does, okay. is, this, is that focused yeah. inbox 2.0? Microsoft no, is going to decide what's uh, most important to you. And then, uh, and how can you that rely on that, right? How can know, you possibly it's terrible. rely on that? I hate, right? I well, hate, I mean, that's, you know, that's the, you can't. <laughs> no, right? but if, if, I don't know, just some of those things that seemed like, if you told us that five years ago, wouldn't that seem outlandish just five yeah, years ago? Yeah. I think, you know, things like self-driving cars are going to happen a lot quicker yeah. than I think most people are ready for. Um, yeah. That said, we're not going to have flying cars anytime soon. <laughs> and when I was a kid, I assumed when I was an adult, I'd be flying around in a, <laughs> You know, a Jetsons car or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. It's just that's why it's unpredictable. You just don't. Yeah, you don't. It's know. true. It you may, don't really know how it long. May happen tomorrow. Like uh, those, I don't know. those Microsoft envisioning videos they used to do. You know, yeah. where they showed you their view of the future. Right. And, Some of those yeah. things actually happened. Some of them have still haven't happened, and it that could was also like be just a. It's yeah. like cancer research or me, any medical thing. Um, right. There'll be some breakthrough tomorrow right. or yeah. two years from that's now. Exactly we don't know right. in yeah. quantum computing yeah. or in whatever, true. and suddenly this whole new world is going to open up um mm -hmm. but to bring it back home i guess in a way i mean I, I microsoft is one of the few companies and we're literally talking single hand digit and whatever number of companies mm -hmm. that can play a role in this future you know it really yeah. is one of the only ones there aren't that many the one thing we don't really know but uh we think to be true is that and your dog know. is not real <laughs> I'm uh, still waiting on the doors no. for the room here. The one thing we do is what's going on in China. And everybody yeah. I talk to says, we ain't got nothing on compared to what Chinese researchers mm -hmm. have. So yeah. we may be surprised mm -hmm. that uh, AI may not speak English. You know, we just assume. That's true. Oh, yeah, it's going to speak English. Yep. It may not be Cortana. It may not be something yep. that speaks English. It may speak Chinese. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah. I wouldn't be, frankly, I wouldn't be at all surprised. That's kind of my expectation is that whatever is going to happen is going to happen first in China. Uh, I know. Chi Lu is at Baidu, yeah. Yeah. right? You know why China I don't want to get off on a China? political thing, but I think part of it has to do with just a, the basic value system there, too. I think they, by and large, would just be more aggressive about this kind of stuff just because of the nature of the country. Totally and, 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 and yeah, it's kind of. They don't have to get consensus about. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I mean. In other words, yeah, this, they're consensus. not going to have the same moral concerns yeah. that we might have about Look at you know, stem AI cell and research. privacy and whatever. Look at yeah, stem cell exactly. research in the U.S. It's stymied by the, and I don't, well, by I think this is a good thing 
that yeah. we are that's what a democracy does it chews on this stuff but mm -hmm. it slows you down in some respects when you have an right. authoritarian regime that can make a decision yeah we, let's make that's it that's why uh, apple's so great mm -hmm. you know <laughs> <laughs> i mean the google well, thing works dis there are structural <laughs> disadvantages too i mean there's all sorts of <laughs> right. problems both ways uh, but I'm just, I think that mm -hmm. what I've heard about, and there's other uh, cultural reasons why Chinese, the Chinese language, for instance, has been a real hurdle in computing. Right. And mm -hmm. so they've had to handle it. Uh, they'd have to get smarter about it. It's easier to speak than type. There's all sorts of yeah. reasons why they might be working on it harder than we are. Mm. I, f I find this fascinating. I hope it happens before I'm dead, but I'm not convinced it will. I mean, it, it would have to happen in the next 30 years for me to have a shot at it. And I yeah. don't know. I think it's I think it's more forty or fifty. I really do. Mm. Mm. But we'll see. I mean, before you get like C three PO, right? <laughs> yeah. Before you get a robot you can converse with, <clears throat> or a yeah, or a monolith you can converse with. A true personal assistant. I mean, I, I the notion of someone walking around their house, kind of having an ongoing conversation. Isn't far fetched, but I agree it's not going to happen in 2019 or whatever. I mean, it, yeah. it's, but I mean, you can picture little, it. Yeah, I mean, we can, have the pieces are there where you can say, yeah, yeah like this is going to yeah. happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Punter yeah. Joe says <clears throat> it'll happen just before we all die. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he may have something there. I'm but, so lonely. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> <that I die. laughs> Thank yeah. you, humans. We'll, we're done with you now. Goodbye. Yeah. Uh, let's take a, it, it may, and you know what? I think you could make an argument that it is uh, the next step in evolution. That it is, in fact, yeah. an evolutionary step. Then maybe we are, you know, the Neanderthals of of the Earth. Some of us definitely are. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and my neighbors can attest to my scratching. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's the ape in the sun around this ball? All right, let's take a little break. Come back. We've got Windows 10 news, cloud news, and yes, Xbox news. And I'm so glad. <laughs> When my kids, I wasn't going to add it, but Mary Jo mentioned no, it. You gotta put said, it well, in. Now you got to put it in. Come on. When my kid, yeah, I see MJF's <laughs> initials next to it in the. That's weird. Uh, when my kid stole my Elite controller, I almost went out and bought a new one. Now I'm glad I didn't. Mm, yeah. Mm. Although. Uh, we'll talk about that. That's a tease. Just, just leave it. Just leave it. Let it lie, Paul. Let it lie. Just sit there like a like a fish. Our show today brought to you by Rocket Mortgage. Uh, Rocket Mortgage. I love this. This is from Quicken Loans, the number one lender in the country, if you look at customer satisfaction. Number two in total loans, but they're pretty close. And the number one lender in the country is that big bank you really do not want to deal with. Who wants to, who wants to put on a suit and tie and go to the bank and beg, please, sir, could I have a loan? And then, I mean, it really is Dickensian. Dickensian. They, they pull out sheafs of paper and they look up loan rates and then they have a special calculator a little hp calculator that does loan amortization tables in the calculator this was my experience four years ago when i went to that big bank <sighs> fast forward to the 21st century and rocket mortgage quicken loans has created a lending product that is just right for the the technologically savvy like you you can do everything you don't have to go to a bank you don't have to go to the basement or the attic to get paperwork. You can do it all online. In fact, you can do it all on your phone. It's that easy. In fact, it's so fast, you can do it all on your phone at the open house and say, we're approved before you leave. Check it out, rocketmortgage.com slash windows. The, Quicken Loans realized that the, the mortgage experience wasn't, to put it gently, keeping up with the times. Dated not client-focused. It needed a technological revolution. So they created Rocket Mortgage. You go there, you answer a few simple questions. In fact, go there right now and set up the account so that if you do decide to buy, or by the way, refi, and now might be a very good time to refi, rates are not going down. I think they're clearly going up. They've already gone up a little bit. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash windows. Create the account. You can give it the basic information without saying, okay, I want to apply for a loan, just so you can see how it works. And you'll be ready. You don't need to, you don't, you, I, you probably will not need to look at anything. You will know the answers to the questions they ask. Then because of their trusted relationships with all the financial institutions, they'll say, okay, good. Is this your bank account? Let's, we're going to take a look at this. Is that okay with you? Yes. They crunch the numbers based on income assets and credit. They will, they will line up all the loans for which you qualify. You choose the rate, you choose the term, you choose the down payment. Find the one that's just right for you. And then mortgage with confidence 
It's that easy. Apply simply, understand fully, then mortgage confidently at Rocket Mortgage. I want you to go to rocketmortgage.com slash windows right now. Set up the account or at least bookmark it. But why not set up the account? That way you're ready. And if you do go to an open house on Sunday and you go, oh, you can say, pull the trigger, honey. Let's do it. And, and show the realtor. We're approved. I can tell you right now, from, and I know I've been buying houses since I was a young man. It puts you right at the front of the line. You don't, you don't want to be the pe people who say, oh, we love this house. We're going to make an offer, but we're going to go home and apply for a loan. That's, that's the people who don't get the house. Rocketmortgage.com slash windows. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLS Consumer Access org number 3030. I got that advice early on when, I, when we were uh, first home shopping is get, get pre-approved and get that letter because it makes it so much easier to buy. And, and the sellers love it. I only got beat once. And that was by somebody offering all cash. If you're not offering all cash, rocketmortgage.com slash windows. And we thank them for their support. Rocketmortgage.com slash windows. Actually, don't go to windows. <laughs> don't, don't go to windows. <laughs> I don't think that <laughs> really works. Really different ad. Windows. <laughs> windows Weekly. Uh, continuing on. Uh, we, there is no meltdown inspector in this entire show. But, well, actually, that's not technically true. We have a little bit at the end. But, okay, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, presumably, you all have updated. Good news. Uh, and does that mean everybody now is... Because I think the updates... Paul, Steve was saying this yesterday. If you're not on the Fall Creators update, the updates may not be there yet for you, right? And on older versions of Windows, they may not be there for you. Oh, that's probably true. So, Although yeah. we just had yeah. uh, the, the mainstream versions of Windows 10 were updated today. I wonder... Well, get the you. You want seventeen oh nine, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would say if so. you can. And yeah, if you can yeah. get it. Remember, with the last version of um, Windows ten, Redstone three, no two, you not everybody could get it. It's yeah. almost all, almost everybody now, though, right? Almost Didn't that's everybody. Like, they said eighty or ninety percent. <laughs> so or something like that. Everyone has it. Obviously, everybody. That's what that means. Right. Well, if you fully don't, there's a, there's a reason. Fully yeah, fully fully available slash fully deployed doesn't mean everybody has it. Oh, what does that mean? Uh, the word what does the word fully mean? I, I'm confused. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not a writer or anything, but <laughs> what please, what 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 definition is Microsoft using? So what they're what they're saying is it's fully available to everyone, mm -hmm. which means okay. um, even businesses now should feel confident in getting the update and going going and proactively getting it if you don't have it already. But it doesn't necessarily mean every single device has it. Yeah. Is that because they have because the end user hasn't done it, or because Microsoft's still not offering it? Um, right. So they, I asked them that, and they said, um, if you don't have it and you think your machine is eligible, you should go check manually for it. Um, and if you don't see it still, go use the. Um, Media. Really? What's it called? Mm -hmm. they're media, saying creation. media creation. Yeah. Tool. They're saying yep. just yep. Do, yeah. it, do it by hand? They're just saying yeah, if you do Google, it. If you Google search for wow. download Windows 10, the first link should be the Microsoft website where they do have a download of a, you can download the tool like she's saying or the ISO or whatever. Yep. Um, yeah. And, it, and upgrade that way. Right. Oh, wow. Because we, you know, you I've still, been telling people if Microsoft doesn't offer it to you. I know. Well, that's don't the, force that is the normal it. advice. If it don't fit, that don't is. force it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> As they say. Right. But now they're saying you should go look for it if 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 you don't have it yet, and if you still can't get it, it means there's some reason you can't get it. So like there's a driver. If, yeah, they are pushing out if, AMDs now. But let's say as an example, you have a chip that's not compatible. They'll block it, right? They won't. I believe they will. They won't install. That's right. I, oh, you that's mean what if you? The oh, well, hmm. if that's why the force it <laughs> issue, right? If you haven't been uh, offered it, and you go out and get the Windows Media Creation Tool and download. Okay, actually, FCU, let's. Oh, Let's qualify that. Um, if you have a microprocessor that's not supported, yes, it will block it. If yeah, you have yeah. a driver that is the reason uh, you didn't get it, yeah. you're still going to install it. That's not going to prevent that from happening. Mm. Oh, really? Is that true? Because yeah. I, I yeah. thought I had a problem with that on my old um, Acer S7. I had some. No, no. I mean, if you if you go to get the the media creation tool or the ISO oh, oh, and you try yeah, to upgrade okay. that way. And the reason you weren't getting it automatically from Windows Update is because of a driver, like your Wi-Fi card or whatever. Um, yeah. You will successfully install the operating system, and your Wi-Fi card may or may not work. And you'll be so if you sorry. have an unsupported um, uh, processor, which is the case, right? In some in some older atoms yeah. or whatever, 
um, that installer will it will block it. It won't allow you to install it. You do want the Fall Creators <coughs> update because the update for PCs with the Fall Creators update is better. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. The meltdown. Newer meltdown is always better. <laughs> no, no, no. But the Spectre melt. I think Steve said this yesterday. You'll get the mm -hmm. better mitigation. The one that, right. that hits performance less if you have uh, yeah. a more up-to-date. That's computer. true. Um, and it's especially true if you're on newer hardware, right? Well, the, that's the best sure combination true. of things in yeah. the industry is yeah. seriously celebrating this is yeah. the very latest version of Windows running on the very newest hardware platforms. Perfect. Right. Yeah. Well, you still get it's some hit, but not as bad. Better. Right. Yeah. But it's, yep. yeah, it's better than the older versions. Much yeah. better in some cases. Right. Yep. So if, if you're a business and you've been waiting to get the green light, they gave you the green light. Um, this is usually it's like four months yeah, I'm after. Sure. If I'm sure there are businesses open. waiting for that green light to happen. You know what? There are actually. Microsoft there says it's okay green. to upgrade. Yeah. That's great. It's we like, were okay, on. four months of <laughs> guinea pig testing has happened with the home users and everything seems yeah. okay now. So now if you're a business, you should feel good about it. And if you, if you want the actual media for 1709, they're saying next week, January 22nd, it'll be on windows update, windows update for business. Uh, WSUS and the Volume Licensing Service Center. Really? Yep. You know, huh. today's PCs are better than ever. Time to upgrade <laughs> right. to a fresh... In a world <laughs> where, <laughs> where PCs go to yeah. die. <laughs> um, yeah. I, you know, I wish, I wish, here's my wish for the world. I wish everybody could afford a brand new PC. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but they can't. I can't, so uh, have fun with what you have. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, the good news, <laughs> if there is any, is that so far nobody, there's been no exploit in the wild. Nobody's figured out how to actually do this for reals. I mean, aside from the obvious, it's only a matter of time type talk, um, I sometimes wonder with this stuff if the move is going to be more against cloud systems and because oh, it's going to sure. be so lucrative. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. Um, and there's a lot and, of imperative for them to do it and buy new PCs yeah, if they yeah, have yeah. to, right? Yeah. Yep. And I, you know, I'm not saying that's going to protect us as individuals with PCs, but <laughs> it, it, the way the world has gone, we're not necessarily the most lucrative targets anymore. So hooray. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're, um, yeah. I mean, if you're a target of the NSA, right, then you might also. Uh, want to upgrade. If you are a target of the NSA. <laughs> so uh, here's some advice for listeners of this podcast. If you are a target of the NSA, probably a Mac user, um, you know, be on the lookout for hacking. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, I think we're, uh, God, you know, I just bought that ridiculously expensive iMac Pro. Yeah. And, and I'm was just, it? I'm praying that, uh, well, and it's fully, it's fully fixed as far as I can tell, though, Nobody has written what Steve has written for Windows to check. That's right. That's right. But has um, I'm have trusting you sold Apple. the um, the uh, whatever the color is uh, space gray uh, accessories on eBay yet? I I'm not using them. Should I? Is there big money to be made in space? There is gray? big money to be made. Yeah. Because I'm not using them. I don't it's like wireless. this week's version of the um, Connect adapter for the Xbox One S. It's um, the really limited true? supply, and mm -hmm. uh, they're going for big bucks. Really? Wow. Wait a minute. Let me check. Ebay, <laughs> Apple, <laughs> Steel, yep. Gray, oh, yeah. keyb I have a keyboard, keyboard and a mouse, yeah. Because yep. <clears throat> if it's, I mean, what is it, $5, $100? What is the... I mean, the keyboard itself would normally probably cost 100 bucks if you could buy it. Right. I bet it's a lot more than that. I, I, I wonder if anybody wants a, a black USB cable, lightning cable, because I got one of them too. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I don't know. I don't see any listings, but it I'll, looks, I'll. It looks nice with your U2 iPod. <laughs> I have one of those too. I gave it to my sister for a birthday. Yeah, it the had all the U2 item. music on it. Yeah, I it probably that. still has the old connector too, the wide one. I bet. Somebody's I saying remember. the mouse is going on eBay for three hundred twenty-five dollars. Yeah, it's that's just, a. I'm literally not it's, using. It's a terrible mouse. I don't like it. I know, but it looks awesome. <laughs> Well, now I want to keep it. <laughs> now that I know. Well, I mean, eventually Apple's going to sell them from their online right. store or whatever, so, so they won't be exclusive never, right? anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail that. I... Yeah, you did. <laughs> I'm thinking. Like Paul's no, I'm uh, thinking. bargain of the week. 
or I guess yeah. rip off of bargain of the week tip. <laughs> Redstone that's three. Right. Sell that's, your old uh, tech. That's the Fall Creators update, aka Redstone three, aka seventeen oh nine, was the fastest to reach a hundred million devices ever in and the history. When exactly did that happen, Mary Jo? Please. I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody. Knows. <laughs> that's the other thing. It's like there is. I don't even know there. There are six hundred million people using Windows ten. Wow. And they said that this release was the fastest to hit. 100 million. But we know that roughly 50% of all Windows 10 users are on this release. So there are at least 300 million people using it probably, right? right. Rough math. Um, so you know you know why they gave you that stat, right? I mean, you were a little brain-addled. You had just come out of CES. You were having trouble digesting right. the, the um, blog sure. post, as I recall. Um, yes, we, but, had, we had words. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason they told us that is because, as we've insisted on the show a few times, Things are going well, right? And they're pushing it to more people and having fewer problems than previous releases. So they're trying to oh, wait, that, say that. That's a fact. Yeah. And they said it yeah. poorly. Um, they, yeah. The they, way they uh, said it. Eh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, uh, by the way, this is the, it, it's a paradox of a sort. I mean, I still feel very strongly that Windows as a service is done poorly and is a mistake and is moving too quickly and yada, yada, yada. But the fact remains, you know, the last two releases, the two they shipped last year, mm -hmm. um, both went very successfully. And the creators update, the one that came out in March or April or whatever, um, they specifically went pretty slow with that release because of what had happened with the previous one. Uh, but they didn't do that with this version at all. It's right. It's been deployed very quickly. So and, and when they actually released it with the green light to businesses, it had only been three months instead of four. Versus what, five or four. Okay, four, yeah. four to yeah, five. That's right. Yeah, yeah I, I, uh, you can't argue with the the facts of this situation i mean it's it's been going good nevertheless the industry marks six straight years of bc sales decline <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well it's not windows 10's fault maybe they're related uh, yeah everybody's upgrading by the way it's it is perhaps coincidental but i don't believe it is that the start of this decline was literally the quarter in which windows 8 was released um <laughs> You know, <laughs> so um, the mm -hmm. good news from the from the perspective of the industry, well, I guess it's twofold. One is that the the uh, falling sales have slowed dramatically. If you look at the sales number from 2017 versus 2016, it's a very small drop. Um, and that's there were some bad years there, but the the drops getting smaller and smaller. And we're, and we're hoping for a plateau of some kind or some kind of rough, rough, uh, roughly plateau like <laughs> situation going forward. Mm -hmm. But the the other good news is that. You know, the, the PC market has responded to this because, remember, PC sales since 2011 literally year, have fallen 30%. I mean, it's all, they've almost lost a third of their annual unit sales volume. Um, they've responded, I think, in smart ways. I mean, from the perspective of just PCs, you know, companies like Lenovo, HP, Dell, and others are going after these kind of sub-markets that are profitable, gaming PCs, premium PCs that kind of thing. And they're also diversifying into um, other products. We saw a bunch of that stuff at CES where a lot of PC makers are releasing different device types, uh, smart speakers um, and, and you know, different things that are not, we wouldn't call PCs, you know, uh, they, they, they're diversifying or becoming uh, more than just PC makers. And then of course there's consolidation too. And I don't think there was anything dramatic this past year, but there's still talk around uh, companies that aren't a big deal in the United States, like Toshiba and Fujitsu, and I think I think we're going to see further consolidation as well. And that, you know, that makes sense given that it's a smaller market and so forth. But not a complete nightmare. But obviously, um, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> sales growth would be better. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, but they're making it up with volume. No, wait, no, they're mm -hmm. not. I don't know. <laughs> Okay. It's getting there. Yeah. Um, it, you want to do new fonts page? What about the new fonts page, guys? What about guys? the new fonts page? <laughs> is this in, uh, this is in uh, Redstone 3 or? Well, or is this in, no, uh, it's Redstone actually not technically 4. in anything. It's, it's oh. hidden in Redstone 4. It's not a feature that they've exposed, but two things going on here. One, we've, we've spoken about this a bit. This is the first release of Windows 10 where they have not announced here's what we're doing, you know? So there hasn't mm -hmm. been an event like a reviewer's workshop or something. It's the first time they haven't done it. And, um, I, I'd like to see something along those lines. It's going to, I think we're getting down to the wire We're we've got to be a month or so away from yeah. 
the it's feature set happen, finalizing. Right? I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. I don't see any place for it. I mean, but whatever. Okay, so this is what they're doing. It's different. Everything's different this time, I guess. Um, the other one is that, uh, and, maybe, and maybe tied to this, a lot of the stuff that we're uncovering inside of the builds may not necessarily happen, right? They never announced it anyway. I mean, so um, a lot of Windows enthusiasts, and I think Windows users too, have been calling on Microsoft to further get rid of the control panel, which is that legacy user interface, and get all that stuff into settings. And we really do see that in RS4. It, it is really uh, transforming into a very... What I, what I would call a command dense user interface. It, it used to be like this play school looking thing with five big buttons and there were a couple of options in there. And now it's got multiple panes and lots of options and there's a lot of information in those windows. Mm. And um, they're, they're taking on some more complex UIs. And so not that font management is necessarily a complex UI, but it's a little more, um, you know, again, command dense than a lot of uh, settings UIs and it's could be happening in RS4. It's, it's not something that they've announced, but uh, Raphael found it in the most recent build. And um, I think it was Raphael, right? Yeah, it was Raph. Yep. It's Raphael, yeah. And mm -hmm. um, it looks a lot like the control panel UI. And I, I had sort of, um, I don't remember, a couple of builds ago, they, I think uh, shots leaked of what the settings UI was going to look like. And it looks to me a lot like the control panel. Like it, it they've mm -hmm. they've reached that point where this play school thing has become kind of professional looking. So I posted a picture of control panel from Windows ninety five on Twitter, mm -hmm. and I said the here's the new settings UI uncovered. You know, because it looks it looks <laughs> a lot, it almost looks exactly like it. Yeah. So yeah, they get there. And this is why everybody on Twitter hates Paul Thorat. <laughs> it's one of the reasons. <laughs> Because <laughs> you just don't know what you're seeing when you're looking at his Twitter feed. There was a, a TV show called Everyone Hates Chris, I think was the name of it. And so it they was. should have one called Everyone Hates Paul on Twitter. No. no. <laughs> don't give Toronto. anybody an idea. Somebody will do it. Yep. It'd be <clears throat> hilarious. Actually, your Twitter feed is rich with images. It's a very... It it's is a rich. Lovely, lovely feed. <laughs> that was my... You just went by my best... One of my best tweets. I got to someday I can compile my best tweets, but it is... Which one? Uh, something along the lines of, if you fall asleep while meditating, does that mean you're really good at it or really bad at it? <laughs> <laughs> Meditate on that for a while. <laughs> Think yep. about that. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Hmm. Um, do you want to move on to Skype or do you have other things from this segment? I uh, guess we're getting a Redstone I would love 4, to move past right? Skype if there, we could. Yeah. 17. Yeah, we should talk about the build. Yeah, the oh, new build that came out. Is out. Yeah. 1709. No, wait, 17074. Yeah. Right. It wasn't a big one, right? I mean, a couple smaller things in there. I think we've seen the Big Bang release already. I think that is part <laughs> yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah, more fine tuning. I, I, I mean, I Lots of edge, like, edge yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. Including Quiet one hours. of my biggest pet peeves, which is like a very small thing. And I feel weird even trying to explain what this is because I think most people will not understand what I'm talking about. But if you use the favorites bar, the favorites bar in Edge or in any web browser is like the taskbar in Windows, right? It's you either use it or you don't, <laughs> you know? And what I mean by that is I use the taskbar pretty exclusively. I pin all the apps I actually use there and that's what I use to launch apps. I don't go into the start menu, like I said, unless I need, you know, an app I only use very occasionally. So I do the same thing with uh, bookmarks in Edge or favorites or whatever, uh, or in any other browser. I put I use the bookmarks <laughs> bar. In other web browsers, uh, because they're just more mature, on an individual icon basis, you could give that thing a name. You could change the name. You could get rid of the name. It could just be the icon. Um, and Edge didn't support this. Edge today doesn't support this. So in Edge, every one of those things has to have a name. You can change the name, but it has to have a name, at least one letter. You can't leave it without a name unless you want to leave all of them without a name, in which case you get these indiscernible icons, and that's all it is. So in this release of Windows 10, they're adding the ability to, on an icon by icon, I should say, a, like a favorite by favorite basis, determine whether that thing is an icon with a name, which you can define, or just the icon. You can do it mm -hmm. discreetly to each one. That's exactly how I use this thing uh, on other browsers. So it's one of 117 things that has kept me from using Edge. It doesn't get me that much closer, but it they have you know eliminated one of the problems I have with it. Nice. 
Does anyone understand what I'm talking no. about? <laughs> I'm actually, I do. I'm actually, I can't believe goofy. you care, but I understand. I know, I'm transfixed I by your font choices. Uh, that is, <laughs> that's not your computer, no, I presume. Because I don't think you use <laughs> Opera as your browser. No, that's uh, Raphael's computer, and uh, he does use Opera, yes. That's his, 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 his go-to browser? That's crazy. I think it's, look, uh, the way I say this is um, nobody's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy talk. He's using like a diversified ecosystem. Oh. No, I, think, I, I, I I suspect what he would say is that it's the Google rendering engine without any of the Google invasions. Mm. It's, it's biodiversity in action. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, and by the way, for all you server insiders who listen to the show. Ooh. Crickets. <laughs> okay. Why didn't you look at me like I was going to say something? <laughs> just like waited for me to say something. Um, yesterday, yes. Microsoft also rolled out an insider preview of 17074 for server. So right. uh, we don't know a whole lot about what's in the coming Redstone 4 equivalent of server. Uh, but we do see them making some progress on Storage Spaces Direct, which got pulled from the Redstone right. 3 version because it wasn't up to quality uh, standards. Uh, but they're they're still tweaking this, and they're adding support for new kinds of hardware. Um, and it looks like maybe this is going to make it back in with the coming version. If you're a Storage Spaces Direct fan, Mary Jo is so patient. <laughs> <laughs> uh, several several years of withstanding this has made her immune. I'm just like, okay, he can make all the faces he wants. I know there are people who care. <laughs> Okay. Look at you in the font thing. Come on. Yeah, if really, that's not Paul. More obscure, really, dude. Paul. I'm saying, I'm just saying, Algerian, really? All right. Um, <laughs> actually, those are just alphabetically what shows up. We're, we're all stuck with those weird fonts, I think. Yep. Skype is getting uh, signal based, which is good, end to end encryption. Yep. Now, I thought mm -hmm. Skype was always encrypted, but it was always Microsoft proprietary, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Well, so, so a lot of people, including um, many of my readers, are like, it's already encrypted. It's got 256-bit AES encryption. They, that's what they said. Look it up. And I'm like, yeah, but it was never end-to-end -end encrypted, uh, right? right? That was the difference. Does that mean Microsoft and, could read it? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know who could read it, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody could read it. All right. The government. I don't know. Signal so, is good. Uh, Signal is really yeah, good. And I right. my suspicion is that Microsoft had it on their servers unencrypted or or in in some form it was stored unencrypted. So Yeah. yeah. It was encrypted so now in, in transit, but not in yes, yeah, at rest. Right. Yeah. So now if you're a Skype insider, you can start testing this. And they haven't said when it'll go out to everyone, but at least it's in progress now. And it's coming uh you can test it if you're on Skype for iOS, Android, Linux, Macs or Windows desktop. The only thing you can't test it yet on is UWP, <laughs> which is kind of ironic. Yeah. yeah. Right. Will yeah. it be in UWP <clears throat> Skype eventually? Yeah, I'm sure it will. Yeah. yeah. Right. The other thing that's good, two things about it. I believe this is only for uh, conversations with a single person. I think it's like a one-to-one -one kind for of now, thing. For now, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's not the default. And you have to enable it. Yeah, you do have to. And that was the other thing. You have to manually yeah. enable it. You have to and say, I, I want have an to incognito think, conversation. Yeah, I... I Every one of your conversations should be like that. I I, I, yeah. I, I suspect that will change to the default as they figure yeah. out how it works. Google did the same thing with Allo. I don't know if you remember. Uh, and they got a lot of heat for it. That right. it, it had strong encryption, but it, but only if you asked for it. Only, only one to one. Oh, well, only if you asked for it. Yeah. yeah. And I think, part, I think it was for the same reason. I think it had something to do with... I think it was because it had to be with just one person, I think. Oh, maybe. Or, originally. Maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what, okay. Um, Interesting. Interesting. Anyway, it's good. It's I'm glad we have it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, um, overdue, but yeah, good that they're doing the it. The former yeah. world chess champion, Gary Kasparov, who was very, a very outspoken critic of Putin, um, mm -hmm. used Skype primarily for communication because he felt like it was secure, but he'll be, he'll be happier now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> He's particularly happy to discover that those... <laughs> Years of conversations <laughs> might have been hacked. Yeah, or they're on Microsoft <laughs> servers just waiting to be hacked. Yeah. OneDrive for Business has a new feature. Guys, this is another one. You better not do the crickets again. I'm, I'm no, my, this one's important, no. but I, uh, we, we need to um, qualify a few things. But 
Okay, so this let, one me, is let me give the broad intro first, and then you can do your yep. thing. Yep. OneDrive for Business is getting a feature called Files Restore, which we've been hearing them tease since Ignite last year. Um, and so what this is, is if your files or folders get corrupted or um, attacked maliciously, you're going to be able to go back in time and restore them, um, I believe up to 30 days back uh, and restore them. So far, we think this is only a feature for OneDrive for Business. I don't think they've said it's coming to OneDrive Consumer. And if you're wondering when you're going to get it, it's going to start rolling out to Office 365 clients um, as of the end of January. And they claim the whole rollout will be done by mid-February, which means Paul won't get it till March. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So the qualifiers I, were, I was going to add, you, you already covered one of them, which is that it's not for clients. They've never said it would be, but they I never have, right? Yeah. No, but I, I have to think it is coming uh, eventually, Me too. but there's also yeah. some confusion over where it's going to be. Um, I believe it's only going to be in the cloud interface, uh, at first. Right. <laughs> so, um, unless I'm wrong, but I, the, the demos oh, right, I've you have seen to have of this Office 365. Right. Well, but there's an office, I mean, you know, there's a, not an office, there's a OneNote, hello, there's a OneDrive client that covers OneDrive for business. Conceivably, it could be added to that client. I suspect if and when they bring it to the to OneDrive for consumers, that might be the time to do it because it's, you know, right there in the client. But to me, that's the, that's the obvious, that's, I don't know, that's how I interact with my files uh, in the cloud, right? Not in a web browser, but in a, in File Explorer, um, it's. I'm glad it's there. But I, unless I'm completely misunderstanding this, if you look at mm -hmm. the pictures of it, it's the web interface. Yeah, you're right. Which is fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm. You know, it's still. It, it's valuable. It's still good to have. But um, I don't. I mean, maybe I'm off base, but I don't think my, most people think of managing their files from the web browser. Mm -hmm. Um. The other interesting thing, which Taro Alhonen found out um, for us, was mm -hmm. you'll you're going to be be able also to restore your entire OneDrive for business using this thing if you need to, which yeah, is yeah. So it's good. like a ransomware type thing, <clears throat> right? Right. And people have been asking me, believe it or not, Paul, about SharePoint and when the SharePoint libraries will be supported by this. What and people? I've been told by Microsoft. That Who are these people? Next. People, many you know, people, people, people many, who are not big, named Todd Clint many, are asking people, many, many people. Many people. Are saying, <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> um, but SharePoint Libraries is next up to get the uh, files restored treatment. I just don't know when, but it's on the roadmap. That's incredible. <laughs> they think they're people now. <laughs> 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 I uh, I am ready to get a new Xbox Elite controller, not because mine is worn out, but because somehow it has migrated elsewhere in my facility. Yeah, yeah, and mine I has it. fallen I apart. It. I well, I, I love the hard. Elite controller. Yeah, you play hard. I I drop it a lot. I was describing. I was telling Brad this. You know, if you think about a typical multiplayer game where the game ends, and I, I, I might be in the final kill somehow. I either killed the guy drop that is it, the final Paul, kill, or throw it. No, I don't do anything with it. I, I leave it on the table and I get or at the desk. I get it to go to the bathroom. I get a drink or whatever. And because it's now playing in the screen, my, the, the controller vibrates on oh, the table. It vibrates its right way up. off. <clears throat> and then it, <clears throat> it explodes. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the, yeah, the central strength of this uh, controller is that you can replace all the buttons and everything. <laughs> it explodes. Um, <laughs> but if you drop it on the floor, they, they all the they pieces all go everywhere yeah. and it's really hard to find yeah. all of them. So anyway, yeah. um, the current Elite controller is based on the previous generation Xbox controller. So it's lacking two features that would be super useful to have, and they will be in the new version. Um, one is Bluetooth compatibility, so you can connect it Yay. to any Windows 10 PC wirelessly. Yay. And the other one is the ability of, or not the ability, the uh, addition of a headset port, like a you know standard headphone jack, so that you can use any headset and nice. you can you know use voice control. Or just will the, will the headset work with a microphone? So it's a, one of those microphone headsets. Ports. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Nice. Yes. So now that, especially with Connect going away, um, this is an actually is, is emerged as the only way you can interact with this thing with your voice now. So it's kind of important to have that kind of thing. So um, USB rechargeable too. I like that. USB C. I should say USB C rechargeable. Is that what that says? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, that that I. I'm reading the article on this uh, site called Throttle. <laughs> oh, I didn't write. I didn't write. I didn't write. It. I didn't write it. 
Yeah. I'm, what I'm de what I'm describing is the differences between the current gen wireless control and the previous gen. This will be based on the current gen. So that USB thing is no, USB C. It's not, it's not USB C on the current gen, is it? It's it's micro USB. It is micro USB. This is right. going to be USB C now. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I'm not sure how much that matters, but oh, it whatever. matters, Paul. Okay. <laughs> well, for, well, I'll tell you why. For okay. one thing, is uh, yeah, wattage, but let me ask you this: later. wattage, wattage, baby. If you're recharging via USB, oh. like a micro a, USB or micro USB, yeah. you can't charge. It's probably you, USB two as well. Yeah, USB C would so, have up to 100 watts. I mean, you could theoretically charge it faster. But I don't can know. you? Does the Thunderbolt three? Can I drive two 4K it's displays? Not Thunderbolt three. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's not. <laughs> sure it's um, USB. Type. So the bad news on the controller is the price is still going to be very expensive. I think the current one is 129 bucks. Totally worth it, by the way. Um, but the availability is unclear, and you know, frankly, given the release schedule for Xbox stuff. It's kind of reasonable to think it might not even ship until the fall. You know what else is cool? Uh, we don't. Yeah, we don't know. Because I read so, the article on Therat.com. Yeah, the case is char is a charging case. The so case is a charging is a case. case. You know, kind of like the AirPods. So you keep the case plugged in via USB C, and you just place it into you it. Place it in the case, and it's recharging. Oh, I, I like mean, that. Yes, I, like I that. thought you might. I thought you might. I see. I, I like that. So you know, if you get a premium, I don't actually read articles on this site, Leo. I don't. I don't <laughs> can read them all. I barely talk to the people who write these articles, <laughs> frankly. Um, <laughs> but hey, this comes from a leak on a forum on a Baidu forum, yeah. I guess. Oh, but I should mention, by the way, the reason it's on the site is Brad um, found out about this controller several months ago oh. and was asked not to write about it. Oh, okay. And uh, when this leak happened, he went back to his source and said, "Hey." Is this it? And he said, "Yep, that's exactly it." Good. So we felt comfortable. Well, I'm going to hold off. I know. I know this is why they didn't want anybody to know about it on buying yeah. a new one until the new yep. one. Yep. So we'll see. <laughs> we don't, I don't know. We just don't know what the time I is. I have my nice day one Xbox One X controller, mm -hmm. but it's just like any it's other. Fine. It's just a basic wireless basic controller. Kind of, I want. I'm elite. Pedestrian, I'm one might elite. say. And I know. I see that you're playing PUBG now. <laughs> yeah, I mentioned uh, PUBG because Mary Jo brought it up. Um, so I actually I, did, really? believe it or not. <laughs> is it running on Azure? Yeah. Is it Hadoop enabled? What's the deal? Uh, no. So PUBG <laughs> is interesting because uh, there are 3 million people apparently playing it on Xbox One, which blows my mind because it is terrible. <laughs> it's really terrible. <laughs> you know what's really good? And it's the same as uh, the Battle Royale in Fortnite. I really enjoy it on Xbox oh, One. It's really fun. I, You know, coming from Call of Duty... Um, there are two issues for me with this PUBG. Uh, one is just diversity of game types, right? Um, there's one game type, basically, one map, basically. Um, you go in, it's like one and out. If you get killed, you're done. And I, I find it I, I, I find it to be a lot of creeping around and then you get killed and you're done. And uh, the only question is, what was I number 78? Was I number 22? Yeah. You know, it's like... No, it's very simple, the Battle Royale concept. But... but there's also, you know, when you move between shooters, it, it doesn't matter what game, you know, Halo to Call of Duty to Battlefield, whatever it is. You know, these things have a certain feel to them. And this one is very awkward um, compared to any of these other games. I don't know I, quite I know how to... I know exactly what you're saying. I can't... Yeah. I don't know why. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's awkward. It almost... It's it's not quite a frame rate thing, although it's probably part of it. It's... I don't know. It just feels weird. Do you... And, uh, so try Fortnite. Okay. You can play it for free, which is one of the advantages. And they have it's kind of funny because this is this is, <laughs> this is the battle awesome. bus. So it's a little more cartoony than um COD. Yeah, but that's okay. That's okay. uh it's same kind of same gameplay, except that they have I think more interest. You can build a fort, for instance. You can build So this looks a little bit like um Overwatch to me, that yes, kind of graphics. It's Overwatchy uh, graphics. Yeah. And um it's you know, it's battle royale. They have a battle royale, but they also have a P versus E uh version. But I really, I really enjoy Fortnite, and the thing is, I'm terrible at these games. I don't know if, yeah. if I don't remember if PUBG did this, but with Fortnite, it immediately goes into spectate mode when you die, and you can watch okay. the rest of the game, which is quite fun because you continue yep. to follow until you get to the winner. So this is the fort you can build, yeah. which is kind of. Cool. I, I do think there, there's a thing to PUBG, and you can see it in this game too. There, there's. There's an esport element yes, to these games very e that I yeah. think makes them very popular. With people who are not playing the game. Right, they're fun to watch. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Did you see that? You would love that, yeah. Paul. 
Rocket launcher. I I miss, by the way, rocket launchers <laughs> are one of the things I miss. I know. I know you're a big rocket launcher guy. Rocket launcher, yep. guy trampolines into the air, hits the rocket. Awesome. Yep. It's got good, good. good sniping capability. Um, anyway, it's and it's free. So I, I just would give, it's not 4K, but I would give it a no, shot. It's, it's okay. I yeah. don't care. Yeah. I, I want it to run fast and it looks good. Fortnite. It's okay. I like it a lot. Should I play the crickets now, Mary Jo? <laughs> While you guys were chatting about PUBG, I just tweeted th that the Linux Foundation has a new course called Administering Linux on Azure. Talk oh, about amazing. Forget about wow. PUBG. Oh. Wow. By the way, um, quick update. I ran the HP support <laughs> assistant on this computer, and sure enough, the one thing that's available is a new system BIOS. Yes. So I'm going to install that right now because yes. what could go wrong? Perfect no. timing. Good time to do that. Uh, there's only 18 <laughs> reboots ahead of you. I'm yeah. going to do that after the show. So <laughs> if you would like to hack me, I would say you have <laughs> about 17 minutes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, let's take a break. When we come back, the back of the book, the tip the, of the week. And I have one. I'm going to throw one in. Uh, a yeah. nice. little program of the week for like everybody, it. which you probably already know about if you watch our shows religiously. Uh, and if and if you do watch your shows religiously, Father Robert Palliser will be available for confession <laughs> later. Uh, <laughs> I need I need that. <laughs> we all do, Paul. We all do. Uh, man of woman born, my friend. Man of woman born. Uh, our show today brought to you by I don't know what that means. It sounds biblical though, doesn't it? <laughs> so does Emmaus, for that matter. Uh, our show today <laughs> brought to you by IT Pro TV. You know that in uh, last year. There were one million unfilled computer security jobs out there. This is a, if you are looking for work, if you're just getting out of school and you're saying, what am I going to do? Or you got a job that just doesn't, you know, ring your chimes. You know, you're listening to this, you're thinking, I want to do more computery stuff. Check it out. ITPro.tv slash WW. It's the fun and entertaining way to sharpen your IT skills, whether you're trying to get into IT. And, you know, it's the unfortunate, you may, you already know everything. If you listen to our shows, you are obviously ready. But it's the unfortunate state of the industry that that first job's hard to get. You, it's hard to prove you know that stuff. And that's why the certification system exists. And there are certs in everything now. The beauty is you can get any IT cert at all. You can do the training, learn what you need to know, and be ready to take the test. They even have practice exams at itpro.tv. Certified Ethical Hacker, That's just I just like the name of that one, but you got your CISM and your CCNA or MCSC, all the, all the you know, A+, all of the certs, ISC squared, ITIL, all of the certs. They have courses that you can study. In fact, if you go to itpro.tv slash WW, look at the course catalog, you'll see it's growing all the time because they have <laughs> they have now five studios, many of them live throughout the day, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. So that means they're adding about 125 hours of content every week. Thousands of hours of on-demand training in every possible area. Kali Linux, Linux security techniques. I mean, everything. Azure, of course. Office, maintaining Windows computers, all of that. You can watch on your big screen TV. They have a Chromecast. They have a Roku app. They have an Amazon Fire TV app. Apple TV, you can watch it on your PC, of course. Stream it from the website. They even have iOS and Android apps. So you can get up in the morning, have it on your big screen, get in the car, go to work, listen on your iPhone, get to work, have it on the screen and your computer as you're working in a little window. And I think even just by osmosis, if you're watching throughout the day, and their flat rate pricing, means you can watch throughout the day and absorb all this. Even if you're already in IT, you're broadening your skill base, which makes you more valuable and better pay, right? All right. So join the 85,000 IT Pro TV members, most of them. I would say the vast majority of them who are listeners to Twit, whether it's Security Now, Windows Weekly, they're, that's that's where they come from. So there's people you know already. They have a chat room. You'll recognize friends in the chat room. They have a Q&A, you know, like study groups online. So it's a lot like going to a technical school at a fraction of the price. Friendly training. Uh, and, I mean, these the presenters are great. Binge-worthy content and life-changing results. I mean, what more could you ask for? We've got a good deal for you. If you go to itpro.tv slash WW for Windows Weekly. Uh, there, there's a code, WW30. So here's what you get. A seven-day free trial. 
And with the code WW30, if you decide you want to stick around, you'll get 30% off the monthly subscription for the rest of your life. As long as you stay an active member and you want to, you know, even if you've got that perfect job, the reason you have that perfect job is because you've got the skills. You want to keep those skills up to date. Uh, premium subscriptions include the Transcender practice exams, virtual labs. Now, this is the deal. Normally, they're $857 a year. $600 a year if you use the code WW30. That is, com compare that to just buying the materials. Or I mean, it's a tenth of what it costs to go to a technical school. ITPro.tv slash WW. Don't forget, WW30 is the offer code. They have a very, very, very good... Um, uh, you know, group discounts, uh, many, I can't say the commercial business names, but I'll give you an example. Harvard University, they have a group plan. There's a great, uh, uh, you know, uh, portal so that you can, as the manager, you can go in there and, you know, assign training. You can check how people are doing, all of that stuff. If you want to know more about that team solution, you can do that as well. You can sign up for a demo of the supervisor portal. That's I, but do use this address so they know you heard it here. I T Pro. Dot TV slash WW. Make this the year. You do what you've always wanted to do. Get into the IT business. ITPro.tv slash WW. The great jobs are waiting. They really are. All right, time for the back of the book. Let's kick things off with PT. And I'm not talking physical therapy. <laughs> Although I clearly <laughs> need it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did you see? There's a new. Uh, there's a new uh, Girther movement. They don't believe. They don't believe that Paul's height and weight are what he states they are. Did you see that? No. Like, oh, the, the, <laughs> I've never stated, stated my height or weight. What do you mean? It's the. I'm kidding. I'm teasing you. Uh, pick of the week. Tip of the week. Let's start with the tip of the week. And yeah, actually, and a weird coincidence given that is. last uh, yeah. advertisement. Um, Google announced this week that they were providing a, a free IT support professional certificate through Coursera that normally would cost you $49 a month. It's uh, aimed at people who are beginners, people who are not IT pros, who want to get into this uh, business. Nice. And um, they, they note some statistics, you know, 150,000 open IT support jobs in the United States alone. Average starting salary is over $52,000. Um, and it's basically an eight to 10 month program that you kind of do part time virtually and you get the certificate and then you can use it to help get a job. In fact, they even have a, a job placement service. Um, if you don't mind opting in to share, you know, how you did in the that course. That just shows you how much demand there is at this point. And from Google yeah, and alone. It, it, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Google. In fact, the reason this exists is because several years ago, Google was uh, having trouble finding talent. Yes. And they eventually yes. started looking for what they call non-traditional right. Trainable talent. people, basically. Uh, yeah. yeah. And um, it was so successful. They said, you know, we should turn this into a thing. And it became a course. And now they're they're basically offering this for free. Um Google does a bunch of stuff like this. You know, they have developer training for free through Udacity, for example. Yeah. And um, this is, it's, it's kind of cool. That's kind of yeah, a cool thing. They have a developer cert program that you can get for free. Things yeah. Like that. That's great. Good tip. Yep. Pick of the week, app pick. So this one's actually going to be done by Mary Jo. What? I'm confused. Yep. We're, 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 I'm confused. I know we're mixing it up. We're what? mixing it up. Keeping you on Everything's your Everything's different. <laughs> uh, the app pick of the week is PowerShell Core. Ah. So if no, you like PowerShell, PowerShell mm. you might be interested in this. this. So this is not Windows PowerShell. This is not your father's PowerShell. Oh, this is a right. cross-platform PowerShell. Oh. It runs on Windows 7, 8, 10, Windows Server, and all the Unix flavors that you love. What? Ubuntu, Debian, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and Mac OS. That's crazy talk. Crazy. Yep. So... Here's a couple caveats about this. <clears throat> Just like .NET Core, PowerShell Core is a basically a splinter of what's going on with PowerShell. So the thing that has been called Windows PowerShell is at the end of the line. So if you're on 5.1, that's it. Yep. There's no more Windows PowerShell. What? You can stay on that. It's going to be supported. Um, if you decide to go to PowerShell Core 6, which is the first version of PowerShell Core, even though it's called 6, um, oh. You should know that uh, you might want to take a look at all your scripts because there are people who are saying uh, just about every script breaks oh, because no. there's a lot of features that are in Windows PowerShell that are not supported in PowerShell uh, Core. 
So check it out. It's it's the future of PowerShell. In fact, Jeffrey Snover said it's the most exciting change we've ever made to PowerShell. But you got to be careful in moving to, to PowerShell core if you're on Windows PowerShell. Uh. Well, okay. Oh, now, here's the question. Are those those features that don't work anymore deprecated, or are they going to be added later? Um, they said they're going to try to add as many of these as they can. Um, uh, but yep. things like PowerShell workflows, snap-ins, commandlets, you sh um, desired state configuration, resource uh, execution. You should, If you use any of these things with PowerShell, you should take a very careful look at uh, going to PowerShell core. Interesting. Okay. Still, it's kind of exciting. PowerShell going cross platform, right? It's yeah. the future. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Yep. Now who's going to do object desktop? I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just a quick, just a quick mention there because, mm -hmm. um, Stardock released the new version of object desktop this week. It's on sale right now for half price. So if you've never bought it before, you can get it for twenty five dollars. Oh. It's a it's an incredible suite of That's a great uh, kind of management and customization yeah. apps or utilities that include, by the way, Groupie, which is that thing that Microsoft's trying to add to Windows ten, the ability to drag windows onto other windows and make them tabs. And so, in fact, I, it, it, during the recording of the show, by mistake, I grabbed a chat window I had with Mary Joan, pulled it on top of Skype, and it, what it did was make the window ta two tabs, oh, one nice. of which was. Groupie. Yeah, the main window. Yay, yeah, groupie. pretty neat. But there's a bunch of other stuff in there too. Um, and and it, by the way, if you if you're an owner of a previous version, you can upgrade for up to seventy percent off uh, as well. So, just something to know about it. Just just happened this week. I just bought it because I want a groupie. I wonder if I. Yeah, I just got it too. Yeah. Okay. Good. My pick. <laughs> yeah, Leo's got one. <laughs> yep. Uh, but I think many of you already know about it because we talked about it uh, yesterday on Security Now. Steve Gibson. Um, did a really, I think, a really good thing for the community. He realized that the PowerShell script that we talked about last week, the Microsoft Speculation Execution Validation, despite having the catchy name, uh, isn't really <laughs> that easy to use. And, and he's even, even more obscure in what it means when you use it. So he went out and he wrote in assembly language, so it's tiny, uh, a standalone EXE called Inspector, that really is great. It tests your PC for Windows uh, Meltdown and Spectre fixes. And then even goes a step further and tells you what performance hit you can expect. And if you want to read more, you scroll down. And this is It's free. It's easy. If you Google I-N-S-P-E-C-T-R-E, -E, it's the very first hit on Google. Um, and it's from Steve, so you know it works well. It's easy to uninstall and get rid of. It has a couple of features I've never seen in any of these scripts before. Uh, one, it's completely standalone. There's no no dependencies. There's, it doesn't have to be online, none of that stuff. It gives you very good explanations of what's going on. It's instant. Some of the, I've seen some of these. That's incredible. Think, they're trying to make you uh, think they're doing something, so they kind of be patient while we scan your system. Yeah, they churn or they whatever. Churn. There's yeah. nothing. It's a <laughs> CPU ID qu query. Anyway, uh, he doesn't fool around, but he also has the ability to disable protection for Meltdown Inspector uh, and re-enable it. So if you are getting a big performance hit, you can temporarily say, look, I want to turn off the fix so I can, you know, when I need the performance. This is, he did a really bang up job. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, not really Windows, I mean, uh, Linux or uh, Mac compatible. I tried running, it does run in Wine. And you'll get some information, but I think Wine doesn't give you a lot of the detail that you know you're you're kind of hiding what's going on. A lot of good explanations uh, on the page at grc.com, Steve's site, Google Inspector, or just go to grc.com slash. And Steve's so old school; I love his URLs. <laughs> slash Inspector.htm. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, yeah. Obviously made in front page 98. Yeah, no, no, hand coded. But, you know, why Why put the L in? You know, it's just, it's, if, it's yeah, enough. Rather, it's 8.3. Okay. Everything's 8.3 <laughs> in his world. He's never left that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, grc.com slash inspector.htm. Bless, that is bless Steve's heart because it really is good. <clears throat> and it downloads instantly. <laughs> it's like 143K. He said 93K of that is the high color icons that Microsoft requires. <laughs> 
Oh, man. It's really only a 30 or 40K I also K noticed that it makes a little chime sound when it starts, and I can only imagine how much memory yeah, that took up. Yeah. <laughs> so even though it's one of Steve's tiny assembly language utilities, it's a little fatter than it would be because of the icon. <laughs> It's, so, scal it's scalable for it's Windows scalable. 10. Let's go back to Mary Jo Foley because it's time for our... Unless, Paul, you're going to do an Enterprise Pick of the Week. Nope, we we talked about that, but no. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't think of anything. <clears throat> All right. Um, so there is a Microsoft MVP whose name is Luca Vitale. And he created this amazing chart called Skype for Business and Teams Feature Comparison Table. Oh, Sounds good. not very interesting, but... If you've been following along at home and trying to figure out which Skype for Business features are already in Teams and which ones are coming when, you will want to go find this chart and download it because it's all in one place with many colors, green, yellow, red. It's very uh -huh. easy to read once you download it. Um, so there's two ways to find it. You can go to Luca Vitali's blog, which is Luca Vitali, L-U-C-A-V-I-T-A-L-I dot wordpress.com and go find it there or do a search um, for TechNet, Skype for Business and Teams feature comparison because somebody over at Microsoft saw this and said, hey, we should cross post this because it's so awesome. And you can just go download it. It's free. And everything you want is there in one place. I don't know whether to be more impressed by Luca's initiative or by the crazy number of yeah, I know. conflicting I know. features in Skype. Yep. This is insane. Yeah. So I know this is a big undertaking, right? Phasing, ultimately phasing out Skype for business and putting all these features into teams. It's going to take this entire year if, if they even make their own projected wow. dates. Wow. That's but incredible. This, like, I'm like, where was this chart at Ignite when I was trying to write about this? Oh, man, that would have been way easier. There is also a bit.ly link, bit.ly slash capital S, lowercase f, capital B, VS. Capital T E A M S. <laughs> I I, th I yeah. think Bitly's case That's sensitive. Easier. That's why I, I yeah. say the caps. If not, it's easy. S F B V S teams. Yeah. Um, but there you have it, and you can go. Well, I think he just qualified for MVP MVP next year too. So nicely done. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. Yep. Wow. I think he's done. Yep. Yeah. And uh, code name. So this, this one I'm doing, obviously. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm so confused. I was fascinated to discover that there was a project I'd never heard of that was uh, trying to bring Windows NT down to a smaller system size that predates Windows 95. In other words, if this thing had been successful, it's possible that Windows 95 might not have happened. Because it kind of addresses the same part of the market. You know, Windows 95 was an attempt to bring the DOS plus Windows world up to sort of a hybrid 32-bit computing environment. Bring forward the, uh, I forgot the name, the Cairo shell, you know, that they were working on for Windows NT and kind of, you know, shoot for the future a little bit. But Microsoft also had a project, the codename was uh, Panther, which again, I'd never heard of, which was an attempt to get the Windows NT kernel running in just four megabytes. And so... They had the, there were 32-bit versions of User and GDI that are the Windows NT stuff, and then they have the 16-bit versions of those as well, uh, which were converted into 32-bit versions for this project. But the way it worked out was that in 1990, whatever year this must have been, 93 or whatever, um, NT was just too big. There was just no way to to make it fit, and so they kind of flipped the equation and went at it from the Windows 3X end, and they came out with um, Windows 95, which introduced such wonderful things as Win32s. And uh, the hybrid 32-bit, 16-bit, uh, uh, so long ago, um, you know, system that we forgot about. You know, they hid DOS even though it was really there and blah, 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 whatever. But I literally had never heard of this. And this comes, I should say, uh, courtesy of Raymond Chen, who um, is just one of the most awesome things about Microsoft <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. He writes about the most esoteric kind of old-school programming topics on his blog, uh, which is the old new thing, um, which you can find on the Microsoft Developer website, the MSDN website. But um, this one's a little more mainstream, and that a lot of people would be interested in it. But I, you know, one of the like, as a guy who kind of like learned um, kind of what I would call uh, Petzold style C programming for Windows 3X back in the day, and by back in the day, I mean like almost 30 years ago. Um, to see a headline like he had, like, why does <laughs> what <laughs> what. Just, some of the headlines he has, they're just so, they make no sense today 
Um, it was like, I think it was white as H in, or H result. Yeah. H result begin with H when it's not a handle, <laughs> which is just <laughs> would make no sense to any normal human being. But, um, anyway, it's, it's just, his blog is beautiful and it mm-hmm. has this awesome post about Panther, this thing I had never heard of. Panther. I know. I was trying to remember if I had ever heard of Panther. I don't think I did either. I, and that he, was an era when there were a lot of city code names, right? So Panther's Cairo, kind of Chicago, an outlier here. Yeah. Yep, uh, yep. Uh, Daytona mm-hmm. and so forth. But the, he, he alludes to the fact that Microsoft at that time had other cat-based names <laughs> for and then projects. And then along came were... Steve Jobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I just, I cannot, I don't. I'm positive I've never heard of this. I, I've never well, heard of Well, there was like Neptune and Odyssey. Those were other weird ones around that time yep. too, yep. right? <clears throat> yep. Memphis was Windows 98, I think. Um, and there were various, I think Daytona was one of the Windows 98 versions. Neptune was something that came off of uh, 98 slash NT. Wasn't um, there Tuck Willa? That I one I don't remember, but maybe. Um, yeah. I'm just going off the you, top you of You also, uh, if you go to this Raymond Chen blog post, he cross-links to the Windows 95 ship date projector. Yes, projector, right. Which is hysterical. Which is amazing. <laughs> yes. Uh, you can actually predict the date based on all of the memos <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that came off, uh, came out pushing the date. We've got to try to get him on Windows Weekly one of these times. Yeah. He would be yeah. a great guest on Windows Weekly. <laughs> he is a man. He's... he's um, What's that guy that used to be on Star Trek that is kind of famous for not, you know, tweeting and blogging and stuff? Um, the uh, Asian guy. Um, Mr. Sulu. Yeah. What's his real name? Um, I don't know. <laughs> he's that guy from Microsoft. I don't know. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I don't know how else to he say is. it. I, yeah. wow. No, he, he's super funny, but deadpan yeah. funny. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He's amazing. You don't know he's funny till the joke's on you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, golly, we've all worked so very hard today on the Why episode. Why doesn't H result begin with H? <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's a joke, really? Okay, see. Uh, we've worked so very hard today. I think we deserve something tasty, something, a treat, perhaps. Mm-hmm. And Mary Jo... She tried to cajole me into doing this one, too, but... I'm no. like, you want to do the beer pick of the week or a cocktail pick of the week? He's like, no. Can I be fair here? <laughs> as much as we know Paul is a beer drinker, everybody wants your pick, Mary Jo. That's really yeah. cool. Okay. So this is a fun pick. <clears throat> this is for our our, our um, UK listeners. This ah. is a beer brewer in Manchester called Cloudwater. They're, they're really up and coming and making some amazing beers. And what's cool is they are making a lot of American style beers, like many new... Um, English craft yeah. brewers are. Did we, did we visit this place? I can't remember if we did when we did or our did beer tour. did we have tour. this there? I can't remember, yeah. I don't know. Um, but this one uh, that I got to try recently is called Cloudwater New England Double IPA. So it's funny. Here's a New England style IPA from an old England brewer, yeah. right? So this tastes like any American um, any excellent American New England style double IPA that you've ever had. And it's brewed with citric, citra and mosaic hops. They have other varietals too. And the way I got to try this was a friend of mine from England came over, Alistair Frost, thank you, and brought me a can of it. And it was it was so crazy. I opened it and I'm like, it looks and smells and tastes just like a New England style IPA. But it's made by Cloudwater in Manchester, England. Nice. So there you have it. Exactly. If you see any of their beers, if you're over there, they they are a lot of words I don't like variety. in that name, like IPA and Citra. I know, <laughs> I know. You <laughs> don't like any words. of this. This would be not your beer choice. But if you like an aggressively <laughs> hopped double oh. IPA, this is this is for you. Hashtag Namabe. <laughs> Namabe. Uh, all right. Yeah, I like IPAs. So good. We had a visitor yesterday. He said, "What's with you? What's with you, Californians and IPAs? That's all I can get out here." Uh, I said, "Go over to Lagunitas. They have some other stuff too. They do, although excellent yeah. IPAs." Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the clouds have rolled in. A sad, sad time when we have to say goodbye to Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley and end the week's episode of Windows Weekly. But there's always some good news on the other side. A silver lining that they'll be back next week, every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Whether you want it or not. 
1900 UTC. You can tune in uh, live at twit.tv slash live. Join us in the chat room. Great bunch of people, as always, in there. Uh, just go to irc.twit.tv. Is it George Takei you were trying to remember? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. oh my. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. All you have to that do is say, oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, yeah, the chat room knows. It always knows. Mm -hmm. You can also uh, listen to the show uh, after the fact at twit.tv. Uh, just go to twit.tv slash WW. All the shows are there. All, what is it? Several hundred. 553. Holy cow. Uh, and uh, if you subscribe in your favorite podcast app, you'll just get it automatically the minute it's done. To give us a little time to edit out the swear words and we'll have it out for you. <laughs> <laughs> is there more overhead to this show than other shows, no. would you say? No, this is actually... It's funny because Kevin comes to me after almost every show and says, anything I need to cut out? And I say, nope. This show is mm. is as clean as a whistle. <laughs> wow! <laughs> and twice as piercing. Let's get a couple of drinks going and fix that problem. <laughs> You'll find Mary Jo Foley at her ZDNet blog, all about Microsoft.com. I hate to call it a blog. It's a it's a microsite. It's a what do you call it? A journalistic call it a endeavor. A digital artificially form. intelligent. <laughs> yep. That's it. Everything. That's everything it. you want. It's a Cortana, <laughs> Cortana enabled <laughs> blog. Yep. Uh, Paul Thorat, we don't know what the hell to call Thorat.com, but uh, yeah. there, but there it is. T H U double R O double T dot com. Even Paul can't read it all. That's the slogan. <laughs> so by the it way. doesn't. Even Paul doesn't want to read it <laughs> That's all. The apparently. Slogan, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, <laughs> Paul's books are at leanpub dot com. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks, guys. Thank you uh, for a great show, and we will see you next week on Windows Weekly. Bye.